passionate instigator and dynamic problem solver, Dr. Kevin Ross Emery, the host of the Dr. Kevin Radio Show, will be taking you outside the box, behind the curtain, and identifying the load of BS we are fed every day. And now, Dr. Kevin. You here this afternoon, this evening, depending on what time zone you're listening to us from. Um, so, I want to welcome all of our guests and remind you that you can go to facebook.com backslash my Dr. Kevin. You will see there today's show being listed. And then on that, you can write comments. You can ask questions of the guests that we have on tonight or of myself. We'll read your questions on air and we will include you in the dialogue. So, again, that is facebook.com backslash my Dr. Kevin. Um, so I, first of all, I want to start as I always do with my hot topic. And, you know, with my hot topic, we never, we're never sure whether it's going to be hot under the collar or something that makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Uh, you know, one of the things that my hot topic about today is, is about friendship. You know, I think that a lot of times we take friendship for granted. They're there. We know we have them. And we know that those people are, you know, you know, we chat with them, we talk with them, we send them an email, we give them a text. Um, but a lot of times I think that our friendships, until something really happens, we don't know exactly, as they say, who our friends are and who they are not. I, over the last year, you know, went from living in Phoenix and selling everything and going on the road full time, i.e. homeless, um, by choice, to, you know, travel and went to England for the summer um, and spent time there seeing clients and teaching some classes and staying with friends. I came back to New England, where I'm originally from, and I spent some time with some other friends. And, you know, it became clear who was going to make time and who wasn't, um, and who was going to show up and who wasn't. And so I just wanted to invite you today to think about those people who you think of as your friends or that you think that you're friends too. When was the last time you really checked in? When was the last time you just said, hey, thank you for being my friend? I think there's a song like that, I want to thank you, or something like that. But Today's, uh, today's hot topic is warm and fuzzy about the importance of friendship and how friendships really do make the world a better place um, and are something that you um, really need to treat preciously. So I'm going to check in now. Is my guest on? Has my guest called in? Yep, I'm here. Hello. Hello. So let me introduce today's guest. Today's guest is... Jane Del Piero. Jane has spent the last 10 years as the owner operator of an alternative healthcare practice in Telluride, Colorado, a world class ski resort. The last 15 years, she's worked for touring musicians and major music festivals, providing healing services to the artists and sound healings and gong baths. I love gong baths, including The Dead, Robert Randolph, Dave Matthews, Government Mule, The Black Crow, and many, many, many more. She plays music of this years and will be presenting at the Telluride Yoga Festival this year, Sacred Sound Bath, the healing power of sound and guided meditations. So Jane, you know, it's a, it's a nice little sound. And you know, it's interesting because I just had a sound healer um, a few weeks back on my TV show. Com completely. Oh, you know, awesome. So, yeah. So it's kind of exciting. So welcome to the show and up to our first break. My invitation is so Friendships. What do you think about friendships? And how do you feel like you rate as a friend? And how do you think your friends are rating for you these days? Well, it was the Beatles who sang, I get by with a little help from my friends. Um, friendships offer us the support we as humans need that connect us back to community. Because I actually think that what's happening is that we're getting lost inside the uh, information matrix and inside the telephones and inside the computers there's no people there there's nothing alive in there 
and we're losing that connection. So for people to really reach out and make the phone call or invite friends over for dinner or to have a little after, you know, maybe an end of the week party at your house on Friday afternoon or something, to, to really bond together because it's, it's so helpful for all of us. It, you know, they can help us. It's the camaraderie we need if we're sick, when we have a life-threatening illness or, you know, they found that women who have had heart attacks and stuff, if they have support groups around them and women that have um, had breast cancer, if they have support groups of women around them, it helps them because we're actually able to release emotional baggage through conversations. And it's just such a powerful, amazing thing to have friends. And you I know, was, and... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. And I what? Hello? Oh, I was just yeah. going to say, with my friends right now, when I've been through, I've had, uh, I had my nose reconstructed a number of years ago, and um, I had to have my cheeks taken to replace my um, nose because of the freckles. I don't have them everywhere. So they actually had to distort my face for a while, and in that time, it became very evident to me who was really there and who was present for me and how they could actually like look at me and talk to me when I had, you know, huge amount of stitches in my, in my face and my nose was all totally redone. And my, I looked like I was making it faces of people for months. And I saw in that time who was really there to support me for me and didn't just want or need something. Cause often in my profession, I get a lot of people will stop me or, contact me, send me emails, just wanting me to give them information or healing energy. And oftentimes as the healer, we don't get it back. And then I notice a lot of people don't get that back. So to take that time and just ask your friends, hey, how are you doing? And to really, you know, be genuinely interested in how they're doing in their life because it helps them and it helps us just have that 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 camaraderie and that um, community. We're not as depressed, you know. It's it's magical in a lot of ways. You know the you know the funny thing is, Jane, that you know, and I you know I love the idea. I enjoy game night. I invite friends over, and actually, we don't watch a movie. We actually interact. Um, yes. You know, we we actually hang out. I know it's an old concept, but, you know, there's a lot to be said for hanging out, just hanging out and talking a whole about a whole lot of nothing and something important shows up here and there. Um, I think yeah. that we, I, I, I agree. I think that we've gotten so um, almost myopic and focused on technology and text and Facebook and all of this stuff um, that we've lost the value of human interaction and you know there were what I've had some hard times has been there's definitely are people that are there for me but I, I want those people to be there and I want to be there for them in not hard times you know? exactly I, I want, exactly so you know I think I know that recently they had a national friendship day um, I saw some stuff going by it and I kind of have a hard time with Hallmark holidays. Uh, and now there's a reason to buy a card and send it to your friend. I'm like, um, yeah, no, I, I don't really think that it says a whole lot because I, though it is a lot of effort today to actually buy a card and get a stamp. It's not like it used to be. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, and it's often, it's that time when you just send your friend a card out of the blue and just say, hey, I've been thinking about you. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you and love you. Thank you for being in my life. You could make somebody's week, month, year by sending them that card. And most people don't even receive regular mail anymore. You know, and to, to have somebody be like, wow, they thought about me. They went out and they bought this card. They took, you know, they got it to the post office. They had the stamp. It wasn't just that they had their phone and they could send me a quick message. They really, you know, were like thinking of me. And when we lose that, what's going on is that there's a lot of people getting very lost in themselves and also very lost in um, non-reality almost of being super unhealthy and super caught up in drama and things that aren't real or shouldn't really take so much of their time. But it does, and then we're getting lost as humans. Look, you know, everywhere we can see it happening. 
Well, you know, and the other thing is, I don't know if you dislike these as much as I do. Maybe you don't dislike them at all. I'm not going to make a, I'm not going to assume, but, um, you know, you see these things on Facebook sometimes. Oh, if you're my friend, you will cut and paste this and you will do this and you will jump through this hoop and you will jump through that hoop and you'll do it all on Facebook for for my friend. And I refuse to do them. And I actually had a good yeah. friend of mine that I knew completely was in alignment with me on this. And she's like, I don't do those either. And she did one to me. And I just called her right out, right on Facebook. I was like, excuse me, excuse me. If I have to prove your friendship by cutting and pasting, then we ain't got much of a friendship. So what's up? Yeah. And um, a lot of my friends, what I want to say to them is I, I would rather you be on a hike on a bike ride at a yoga class, taking meditation, sitting in a library, helping an old lady in her house helping an old man, you know, cross the street or with his groceries and sitting and wasting your time on Facebook, Facebook. It's just really, there's a lot of positive aspects to it where we can connect with people around the world that we don't get to see and talk to all the time. Maybe it's too much to call them or the time difference, you know, there. So we can check in once or twice a day maybe and, you know, post something about, what we're doing or, you know, say hi to friends or something. But to get completely lost in what other people are doing all day loses the moment. You're out of the now. It's pulling people out of the now. And and there's our music cue, and we're going to our first break, and we'll be right back to Jane Del Piero. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Home Times. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are are the inspired inspired and the inspiration. There is no death, only a change of worlds. Chief Seattle. Deborah Livingston is an award-winning intuitive psychic medium whose international services include mediumship, spiritual assessment, animal communication, and spiritual mentoring. She is a published author and a trained shaman. Deborah provides evidential messages from spirit and departed loved ones. Learn more at devlivemedium.com. That's D-E-B-L-I-V medium.com. Hi, I'm Jimmy Buffett. How would you like to meet an endangered manatee? You can by joining Save the Manatee Club's Adopt the Manatee program. You can't take them home, but you can get to know your new manatee friend through the photo, biography, and information the club sends to you. And you can read updates on your manatee in the club newsletter. More importantly, your contribution goes to programs that are working to save manatees from extinction. It's easy to help. Call 1-800-432-JOIN. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dr. Kevin Show, where we're challenging everything and everyone. Today we have uh, Jane Del Piero. Uh, she is a sound healer. She lives in Telluride, Colorado, and has actually offered sound healing to lots of major musicians and artists of all different kinds. You can find out more about Jane at www.lovelight, which is L-U-V-L-I-G-H-T, 
Um, and that is dot com or dot net? Dot net. Dot net. I almost said dot com, and I'm saying, I'm thinking, no, I think it's dot net. I think it's dot net. Don't say this wrong. There you go. But I think they'll love that. Yes. So, Jane, we are, uh, so we're into the first uh, real segment of the Dr. Kevin Show. Um, and this is where I ask you to take my listeners outside their box. Where do you want to stretch their comfort zones, help them expand their consciousness, their reality, or just their everyday living? Well, I want people to realize that everything that we think we're creating and every thought that we have is basically like a psychic energy, too, and it affects our health and our happiness. And we get caught up as humans in the story because it's always been a story. Everything's a story. And when we get caught up in the story, especially in the story of the past, or the story of the future, most often the past, though, then we lose the present. And when we're not in the present, then we're not really living. We're not really giving our all to that moment. And that's when we get unhealthy and that word disease, dis-ease comes in. Because if you spend too much time ruminating about the past or having resentment or regret or remorse, then in that space, that's where that dis-ease, because that's all that word is, is created. And so for each of us to realize that we can create our own dream life, we can create our own realities, and in so doing, every day it's through a practice of like a daily new story to yourself. Instead of telling yourself the story of what isn't possible, change the story and say, oh, well, what else is possible? when those negative thoughts creep in. And when I have a negative thought creep in, I'll say, well, that's an interesting perspective. What else is possible? And then I begin to dream and vision outside my box. And then that's where I begin to create things, create this dream life that I'm manifesting, that I'm living today. How much do you think that media, technology, um, and the constant onslaught of, um, fear and violence and, um, you know, uh, things that uh, basically bring up self-worth and self-esteem issues. How much do you think that affects the average person from being able to do what you're asking? Oh, the percentage is probably directly linked to the amount of media and consumerism that they're exposed to on a day-to-day basis. So, for instance, where I live in Telluride, Colorado, there aren't any billboards. I don't see the golden arches here. They aren't here. There's not Pepsi or Coca-Cola machines or billboards or signs anywhere. So I don't see that. And if I don't turn on the news, then in my bubble, I'm not witnessing it. So, um, you know, it's not like I'm going to buy the magazines at the, at the major grocery stores or going into Walmarts or anything. The, the nearest Walmart 65 miles from here. So for me, I'm a little bit blessed. But most people are bombarded with this every day on their drives to work, at work. You know, women are constantly seeing other women with their hair bleached or dyed and um, hair extensions, Botox. Um, fake breasts, uh, you know, body augmentations. So we are just bombarded with all of this, and we either can choose fear or love. So the way I get through it, and the way I tell my clients to get through it is, it's just a movie. It's all just one big movie and story going on out there. And as long as you don't become attached to that story, and you can live in who you are and be the best of who you are, because nobody else can be you at all. It's not possible. So for me to be the best person I can be is to make my choices of treating my body like a temple, making healthy choices, not allowing that media to come at me so intensely, right? So I actually look at it and I'm like, well, this is just the story they're trying to shove at me. And I choose to like like this story or not like this story. I don't have to invest my time and energy into it. Instead, I choose to invest my time and energy back into myself. 
And the best thing I can tell people to do is to start meditating. I'm not saying you have to sit and meditate like in a quiet spot like people do or think that they always have to. Go for a walk in nature and just allow yourself to clear your mind and breathe in that healthy environment and clear your mind. You know, if you need to listen to a guided meditation or listen to some type of a clearing um, music that will just help you calm down so that we can start to remove and erase those negative things that are coming at us because we are shoved with fear, fear of what's going to happen, fear if I don't have enough, fear, constant fear, like I'm not pretty enough, my body's not good enough, whatever it is, we're constantly being bombarded with it. And it's to make that choice of, well, I choose love and I choose to, to love myself enough to not allow that external information to affect my internal reality. Now, if somebody doesn't know they have a choice, you know, let's look at the let, let's look at the average American in 2016. Yeah. Because <laughs> I get it. I've I've been doing professional psychic and healing work, you know, full time for 26 years, and I actually started back in the 70s. And so, you know, I, I get it. These are all familiar concepts. But the person that's sitting out there listening, raised by the single parent, raised by there wasn't enough money on the table, the only food that you could afford was crap. And that that is a very, very real, real reality day in America. And so yes. how do you how, – so how do those people – how do those people break out of that? They, to break out of that, I, you know, I was brought up with nothing. I have done everything for myself. And in so doing, I'm still paying off student loans. I've, I'm like the, the forever student loan person that I've been paying them off for almost 30 years and I'm still paying them off. And for me, I had to make the choices when to say yes and no. And no matter what, I believed I could. And I started my daily mantra of, I can do this. I am smart. I am beautiful. Whatever my mantra was, I got through it and I figured out a way because I learned how to fight for everything that I wanted so that I could attain things that weren't just, just given to me. You know, my father was in the military, raised in full military his whole life, went to the Korean War. We were supposed to have education benefits because he was in the military. Because he had a brain tumor, he committed suicide. Well, they yanked the military benefits from us. We never got them to attend college. So my whole childhood, I grew up thinking I would have these benefits, and then I go to go to college, and I don't have them. So from the minute I decided to go, I was like, I have to take out student loans. And it was my choice. And I never had the money to go do what lots of other people did. But because I made those sacrifices along the way, and I believed in myself, no matter what anybody else ever told me, then I was able to slowly, slowly, slowly get through one program and then on my way to another program and then I'd have to work bartending. Sometimes I would work till 2 in the morning and then be black back in class at 8 in the you know morning. And it was just I had to do whatever I could to just fight my way into what I wanted. And I wasn't going to let anybody else tell me no or that I couldn't. I was going to get really scrappy about having my dreams and my goals laid out in front of me and being very clear. I'm like, this is my goal and I'm going to attain it and driving my energy towards that goal, not allowing anything outside of me to take, you know, pull it away from it. So tell people to really set those goals and to try and like, just even if they're small, you know, I need to save a hundred dollars so I can figure out, pick up the pennies, pick up any change you see on the street to start putting it in a jar. I picked up pennies. Today I found a nickel on the ground. It's whatever I could do to make my life more positive. And I believed without a, without a shadow of a doubt, I, if the negativity started to creep in, I'd say, no, I don't have time for that story. And I got really bossy with my own thoughts. Okay. okay so uh, um, if we've got about a minute before we get into our next break, Jane. Um, and again, um, we are here with uh, Jane 
uh, Del Piero, and you can find out more about Jane at lovelight.net. That's L-U-V-L-I-G-H-T dot net. So um, as we close this segment, give my listeners, if they're trapped in this false reality that that hangs out in the media and the internet and all of this stuff. Um, and not that there aren't real things that happen in the false reality, because there are real things that yes. are happening in the false reality, but it's still a false reality. One simple thing that they can do starting today that doesn't cost them any money, that costs them a minimum amount of time, because I hear it all the time, as I'm sure you do, I just don't have enough time, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough time, um, you know, to, okay. you know, whatever. Yep. Give me one. So the minute. My- yep. So most people have the money issue coming up on the table. So the minute that I'm broke, I don't have enough. I want them all to stop and say to themselves, "That's an interesting perspective. What else is possible?" And then just place their hand out to receive. Just allow the energy to come towards them, and then see what happens throughout the rest of their day or the rest of their week. And every time that negative thought comes up, that's an interesting perspective. What else is possible? Okay. And just really start to change the thought pattern. It's coming out of that neural pathway. Okay, we will be right back with Jane Del Piero of LoveLight.net. The Real Conscious Connection, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. The truth is, you can't change the world if you're broke. I know, I've tried. Isn't it time you turned your life's calling into a profitable, freedom-based business? I'm Michelle Barr. Join me every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern for Sacred Success. Hi, this is Bill Maher. I can find humor in almost anything, but one thing I never laugh about is cruelty to animals. If you don't get the joke either, write People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, 501 Front Street, Norfolk, Virginia, 23510. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Dark where we're challenging everything and everyone. Today we have with us Jane Del Piero. Jane has spent the last 10 years as the owner-operator of an alternative healthcare practice in Telluride, Colorado, a world-class ski resort. She spent the last six months working for Quentin Tarantino the Hateful Eight, and the Hateful Eight movie as their personal healer. She also assists others in identifying limited or outdated beliefs, outdated beliefs that are holding them back and go the distance. Hearing clients all over the world. Um, distance, I believe there's a typo, and, I, and it should be healing with clients all over the world. It says hearing, and I'm reading it, but I believe that she probably meant healing. Uh, I yes. think it manifest, uh, manifest the dream life. I love to be, uh, so she would love to empower other women and men. So, um, Jane, in this part of the the uh, Dr. Kevin show, we start with a little quiz. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Sure. So what movie is this from? Ignore the man behind the curtain. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> really? Ah, it was The Wizard of Oz. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> I have 
haven't seen that yeah. movie in what? I don't even know how many years. <laughs> yes, it's that place where Toto is pulling back the curtain and Dorothy and her and the scarecrow and the tin man and the cowardly lion are realizing that the great and powerful Oz is really just a normal man that's pulling a bunch of levers and blowing a lot of smoke. Yep. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of there are a lot of people out there that want to make you think they're more powerful than they are or that they're smarter than that they are or that you should trust them or relieve them when you shouldn't. So this segment is called Behind the Curtain, and it's where I want you to expose something that's going on in the world where um, you think that people are not getting the truth and that it would the truth, it would, the truth would set them free in some way. So what truth would you like to highlight to my uh, listeners tonight that will change their life? Uh, the truth is that the doctor's not God. They go now, you know, doctor. that's blasphemy in some places. <laughs> hmm so most people will go to a doctor when they're ill and are sick or have dis-ease, and they will hand over their power and all their energy, whatever, and believe that this person is going to heal, fix, cure, relieve them of said ailment. And oftentimes, my question to the doctor such as when I had the skin cancer on my face. It's like, well, have you ever had this? No. Well, how many other people have you worked on that have had this? And then he gave me a number. Because I actually interviewed my doctor before I let the plastic surgeon work on me. Um, so I believe that if people knew that we were each and every one of us, our own individual gods and goddesses, and that we can heal ourselves when we really believe it and through sometimes alternative therapies or, you know, other therapies. I still use Western medicine when I have to, but um, I don't believe that the doctor is God. Well, you know, that's very interesting because, again, um, this was a conversation that came up um it was uh, on the show that I taped this week on the TV show, my TV show, Web of Light. And, um, you know, one of the challenges that I would I, – uh, one of the rallying points, I guess, because we were talking about different uh, – some of the, the technology that a lot of the new age people are using, that, you know, the machinery that will give you information about what's going on in the body or what's going on or stuff like this. And, of course, the Western doctors won't even look at the printout that might indicate that there is some pre, um, you know, there, there, there may be something going on in a, in a stage where you could nip it, nip it before it actualizes. Um, and so yes. the invitation I put out to people was, you know, go see your alternative practitioner, find out what they have to say. Then when you go to your doctor, present it. And if the doctor laughs or poo-poos it or whatever, say, look, you know what? You work for me, and you need to learn to work with all of the people that are working with me, um, and or I need to find another doctor. And I think that we Great. need to have a groundswell from the from the people to fight back against the 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 relationship between MDs and the pharmaceuticals, which is not in any of our best interests. But no, it's not in any of our best interests. Actually, what is the average um, seventy year old American on in the number of prescription drugs that they take annually per year? I believe it's like twelve prescription drugs. Nobody has any idea what those prescription drugs will do to my mother versus your mother if they're taking the same 12 drugs. Just because they're two elderly women does not mean that they're going to affect them the same. And the side effects, the, the symptom pictures, the people in America when we walk around and look at everybody, we're noticing that people aren't getting healthier. As humans, we're not evolving into a healthier species right now which is very sad to see. We should be because we have all this knowledge and all this wisdom and all this scientific advancements and everything. And what's happening is 
We're getting heavier. We're getting more sedentary. We're getting more and more diseases all the time, new ones popping up. And it's very um, disturbing for me to watch my fellow humans get sick and have dis-ease because it's on so many levels now with people. Well, I've, you know, said for a while that there's a strong correlation between disempowered and disease. No, yes. Um, and, and that when we are getting so disempowered and we are trained to give our power away, and unfortunately people of the generation that precedes us, people that are in their 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s, they were brought up that, you know, Doctor yes. was gone. That God that did, and that they had the best. In, they had the best solutions, and they had your best interest in mind. And that medical community doesn't exist anymore. Not on the whole. I'm not no. saying there aren't some unique, really good doctors, and I've met a few. Um, but the ones that are really good actually are open to the alternatives. Are trying to improve themselves. Aren't reaching for the prescription pad and aren't putting people through assembly line medicine. Well, the oath um, of the doctor is to do, to do no harm. So in essence, to do no harm was to, be to actually to help each person in whatever path they choose back to their health and wellness. And maybe somebody chooses acupuncture or chiropractic or, you know, um, maybe going to John a God in Brazil. We don't know, but... That's to, it's not me to judge them. And if some people want to choose Western medicine, then that's their choice too. But I don't see humanity, and especially Americans, getting healthier. And so what can we do to help humanity and right now humans and the, and the planet get healthier? And now, to find that power you know, within themselves. Now, um, talk to me about because one of the alternatives that you deal in, because you deal in some alternatives, um, is sacred sound bath. What is a sacred sound bath? Explain that to our listeners. So I have the uh, some planetary gongs, which are made by a company called Pasty. So they're symphonic gongs. And one of them I have is Chiron. Chiron is an asteroid that sits in the Kuiper belt. And it, in our astrological charts, is um, the wounded healer. And so we all have wounds that still need to be healed. And when we lay in sacred sound, what I have people do is they lay down, and I play sounds all around them. I have Tibetan singing bowls under the bed, eight of them. I have planetary chimes all around my room. And then I have crystal bowls. And I play the gongs and the, the different sound instruments. And I actually... Infuse your body into a symphony of sound, and the person will lie there and actually get so deeply and profoundly relaxed they can fall asleep. Or they actually, I've had patients and clients tell me that they begin to leave the earth and they go out into other dimensions. In that space, so we can heal because everything in the universe is in a state of vibration. So we can tell the difference between somebody who's going to a New Year's Eve party versus somebody who's going to a funeral just by their vibration, especially when they walk into the room. They don't even have to say anything. You can just feel it coming off of them. Every plant, every animal, everything in the universe, even the planets in outer space are in a state of vibration. So our internal bodies, when we're vibrating in a healthy, positive, joyful manner, our cells and our body and our every organ, every system vibrating at that rate. When people are resonating with cancer, which is a very low negative vibration, their vibration is not the same. And it starts maybe in a very small spot in the in the body. And that might be where that emotional trauma sits and then boom, it gets built over and then built over and then built over. And the next thing we know, they're sick. So what the sound does is it reformats cellular memory by dropping us into different waves of meditation phases that we can enter into and cleaning out our cells. It's like having a bath or a shower for each and every one of our cells, cleansing them out and helping them reformat to a new vibration, a healthier vibration. 
Now, where would this fall in the healing process? Is this something that if you have done some work with somebody to, you know, help them realize where they've been giving their power away, where you, you know, somehow worked with them to bring stuff up? Does the sound bath, you know, help facilitate the leaving? Or are you of the mindset that, you know, Joe Schmo could walk in and if he got a sound bath, he'd walk out and he'd be a different person and and not, not, they don't need to do anything else? No, 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 no. I actually incorporate it with many other tools depending on who's in my office or who I'm with at the time. So the, the sound bath that I give to a client, Terry Telluride, who say um, – is throwing dynamite out of a helicopter or doing something crazy for the scary with the avalanches. His energy needs to be very calm. So when he comes in, he's relaxing, and I might incorporate it with some acupuncture. Now, when I go work for a rock band, I might be doing something, say, on uh, Warren Haynes' arm because he's using his hands and his arm, giving him some kind of massage or sound therapy directly on his arm. And then when I put him in the sound bath, it's actually to energize him He wants to be coming up with the energy, and he wants to walk out on the stage fully protected and just shine this beautiful light of vibrations out into the world and not have a care about it. So he he actually, he says it raises his vibration enough that he gets, like, he feels the music differently. So each person is very unique and specific. Okay, and there is our music, and then... We will be back with Jane Del Piero in just a moment here on the Dr. Kevin Show. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Eros Evolution is where sexuality and spirituality meets. Join me, clinical sexologist Martha Tara Lee, on Eros Evolution on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio. Hi, this is Carly Simon for LifeBeat, the music industry fights AIDS. The AIDS crisis isn't over. There have been amazing scientific breakthroughs, but people are still dying, and your local AIDS organization needs your help more now than ever. Volunteer and make a difference. the Dr. Kevin Show, where we challenge everything and everyone. Today, we have Jane Del Piero. Jane has spent the last 10 years as the owner-operator of an alternative health care practice in Telluride, Colorado. She does cool and neat things like sacred sound baths, uh, guided meditation, healing and distance healing with clients all over the world. She helps people identify limited or outdated belief systems. You can find out more about Jane Del Piero at lovelight.net. That's L-U-V-L-I-G-H-T dot net. She has a, if you come to facebook.com backslash my Dr. Kevin, you can ask questions of Jane or myself or participate in the conversation. And you can see the lovely picture of Jane surrounded by what looks like a heart of fire. Or it, looks like, it looks like flames in the picture and uh, where it says love, light, Illuminator. Jane, welcome back. Yes, yes. It is a flaming heart. It was um for the at the Telluride Fire Festival. And a friend of mine made that as a as an art display. And um the second I saw it, since my business is called Love Light, I was like, Can I take my picture in there? And he said yes. So, <laughs> 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 so we we are now on to the last segment of the Dr. Kevin show. 
and this is this segment. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Did you go through the stuff I read you? So do you know what the name of the last segment is? I don't know what the name of the last segment is. I can't remember right now. <laughs> okay. I, I I had a funny feeling when we did the last segment. I was like, I don't think she read the materials because she's surprised by the questions. That's why I send them out in advance, Jane, so people can be ready. This is called What a Load of Crap with Dr. Kevin. Yeah. And it's an opportunity for my guests to share what they think that's going on in the world that's just simply a load of crap. You can talk about anything that you would like. We just ask that, you know, you, you know that obviously you change it up from the first two segments. So what do you think is going on in the world that's just a load of crap, Jane? Uh, oh, gosh, let's see. Well, there's a lot of load of craps going on from everything from the election to uh, the food crisis in Venezuela to uh, how humans treat each other. Okay, so let's start with your first one you said was the load of crap going on in the elections. What load of crap do you think is going on in the elections these days? Um, I think that we are just being fed so much crap by the media and that we aren't actually given a choice, a real choice, of who we want to be our president or our representative for this country. And when we are stuck right now with our choices, we are definitely, as Americans, it's causing a lot of turmoil. There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of aggression. There's a lot of negativity. It's very much about how to attack and um, go after each other. And so it's not supporting that community, lovey-dovey, you know, let's all be friends kind of a feeling on either side. And so that kind of is disturbing to me because I would hope that we as humans can learn to be nicer to each other. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And to be honest, I don't think politics has ever been, been lovey-dovey. Um, no, no, no. I'm not saying it, it has been lovey-dovey. But to actually – couldn't we actually maybe as humans come to a place where we can be a little bit more mature? Well, you know, I would settle for respectful. Yes, respectful and actually address issues that are relevant instead of irrelevant issues that cause turmoil. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of smoke and mirrors that goes on in um uh, that goes on in politics. And, you know, and one of the things is, is as soon as they get us to concentrate on one area where they're just doing a lot of um, smoke and mirror stuff, they slip through bills and they pass laws and they give themselves raises and they do all of these stuff that they don't want us paying attention to. So, yes. you know. Well, that's, it, the, yeah, that's all part of it too, is not to pay attention and, more and more humans aren't paying attention to what's really going on because they don't have the time. They don't have the time to take care of themselves and they don't have the time to pay attention to what's going on. So there's a lot of people that would say the conspiracy theorists would be like, well, that's all part of their plan is to keep us busy and stupid. And do you agree, disagree? Do you think it's just all conspiracy theory, or do you think that there is actually some reality to the fact that they're trying to keep us angry and apathetic and at each other's throats so that they can keep taking advantage of their positions? Is there a truth to that? No. What do you think? No, there's definitely a truth to that. There's definitely a truth to that. We can just witness what's happened here in America in the last 10 years, 20 years, and you can witness how all the video games and all the uh, violence has taken off to a point now that we have people killing each other, people killing cops, people doing terrible things to each other and acting out these violent, violent behaviors, and, but nobody's paying attention to what's really going on. They're like, oh, well, let's fight the gun law. We've had guns for how long in the United States? 
it's not that it's people killing people. And part of that, too, goes back to the food. You know, the food is poisonous that a lot of people are eating because it's not nourishing their brain. They have nothing going into them, and they're getting bombarded with all this violent information and drama and competitive and um, racism, whatever the words are, that it's so much that they start to behave. Like, we're all of a sudden the monkeys in the cages. We are in the zoo. We are living in a zoo, literally. Some places in the world now, people are barred up in their houses and living behind cages to keep each other out. Like, yeah, there's something definitely going on. The best thing we can each and every one of us do is start paying attention to what food we eat, what kind of information we're ingesting, and just really realizing that we're here on the planet Earth to experience joy and love and to have a good time not to work ourselves to death, not to worry about who's got a nicer car, and sure as hell not to go to Walmart every week or to Macy's and spend money on things we don't need. Well, and I do think that there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of redirection into what we feel like we can control because we have been convinced that we have no power. We be convinced we have no power. We be convinced that our vote doesn't really count or that nothing's ever going to come of it or, you know, we're kind of stuck. It's almost like sometimes it's like, um, you know, people in the caste system, you know, like yes. in India, that, that there's this, you know, constant because the people in power benefit off us feeling helpless. Well, of course. You know, I have a friend who voted in Arizona in the um, the early elections, for whatever they call that word, I forget, primaries or something. And when she went to vote, they actually told her she was no longer registered a Democrat, that she's a Republican, so she couldn't vote there. She had to go to this other precinct, blah, blah, blah. She said she didn't want to vote there. She wasn't a registered Republican. So then they said, well, now you have to go downtown. And it was like three in the afternoon. She'd been waiting all day to vote. And then she realized that her vote, like at that point, they were they were trying to scam her out of her vote. And I've heard this story from a number of people now, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, what's going on there? And it's, yeah, get out and vote. We need to get out and vote. We need to really be aware of what we want to be happening in our country. We need to all take action because this is our country and our home. And the more we take care of our bodies and ourselves and our minds, then we can actually do something for the rest of humanity and the planet and our ourselves, our country, our, our families, our communities. Because we want people to get be healthier and happier and to live in a place of love and not fear. Turning that fear around, though, for a lot of people is very hard. And we have to literally just be, lead by example. Uh, and I couldn't agree more. And we're going to be wrapping up. Uh, we've got about 90 seconds before we're going to hear the music. Any last things you want to share? What's next on your plate besides people finding you at Love Light uh, Healing, L-U-V-L-I-G-H-T dot net? Is there any last thoughts or anything you want to share that's coming up for you before we hear those closing notes of the show? I am – it. Just working a lot with the sound healing. I'm going to be taking off next week to work for Government Mule and Warren Haynes from the Allman Brothers. Uh, and then from there, in, I'm going to take a month and go to India to do a, a Kundalini yoga teacher training so that I can um, get more centered and healthy for myself, too. Reinvest into me. And then otherwise, people well, can that's... always contact me at my website. <laughs> well, that sounds exciting. And so... Are you um, going to uh, – is this your first time to India? Yes, my first time to India. Well, it's a place that's on what they call the bucket list these days. I haven't made it yet. I hope you have a great time there and that you get everything that you want out of it. And I'm sure that there will be people that will be touched by your presence there as well. Um, oh, well, so thank you I so want much. To make sure- I want to thank you for being on the show. This is the Love Light Illuminator, Jane Del Piero. And you can find out more about Jane at lovelight.net. That's L-U-V-L-I-G-H-T.net. She works as 
a healer in several modalities. We picked up on the show, acupuncture, uh, sound, energy, um, and now she's going to go learn about kundalini yoga. So she's continuing to add to her tool belt. I want to thank Jane for being on air. We will um, be back next week at the same time. Uh, and at that time, we have Sally Waite, who is going to be our guest. Uh, Sally is a retired clinical therapist who wrote a book called Two Pills, and it's encouraging children not to uh, get themselves medicated. Thank you very much, and have a great week.